Hey everyone, um, good to be here. It's my first time in Tel Aviv. Um, definitely going to come back again. Love the city. Um, so I'm here to talk about. That's my impressive intro slide. Um, I'm here to talk about hatching a phenomenon. Um, no doubt, many of you have heard about about Angry Birds uh, over the years and 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 some of the latest news that we have. Um, I'll share some, some of the early day numbers, I'll share some of the learnings uh, leading up to where we are uh, today. But before that, I wanted to take a short trip down memory lane, uh, reflect a little bit about where the mobile games industry uh, came from. And um, being from Finland myself, um, I always get, of course, warm, fuzzy feelings uh, looking, at, looking at Snake. How many of you finished Snake, filled up the whole screen? Good job. Um, fast forward a few years, that was definitely what sparked the whole industry right there in the late 90s. But fast forward a few years, and we had what became eventually a huge, massive industry. This is end user gener generated revenue plotted over time. I'll go through some of the milestones along the years. So, in my opinion, iMode was what really kicked off uh, the industry from a, want to say, a rich visual standpoint. Um, it did come to the Western world as well, but we made a few mistakes along the way. And it turned out J2ME and Brew were basically the, the technologies of choice uh, around here. Um, Rovio was founded back in 2003, not long after uh, the uh, dawn of an industry. Um, that early, th those early days didn't come without any growth pains. Some of you might remember um, some of the shady tactics used back then in terms of subscription models. Uh, Jamba EU was eventually sued. Uh, it certainly didn't help growth of an industry. That's also the year, it's an important milestone. That was when I joined mobile gaming myself. Um, along came the, what I label the mobile operator valley of death. Uh, anybody who was in the, in, in the mobile gaming industry at the time would remember that churn was big, churn was ugly. Uh, iPhone dropped 2007, big, big landmark right there. But it didn't, the App Store wasn't released at that time. So the App Store came almost a year later, and it was a little bit of an industry Robin Hood moment right there. Um, 70-30 was unheard of, and initially developers thought it was 70 in favor of Apple, not the other way around. <laughs> 2009, along came Angry Birds. Um, I want to say it was after Doodle Jump, it was the um, biggest happening uh, in the mobile gaming space. Um, and it, it was the first truly mass market mobile game that was heard across the world. 2010, iPad. Now, you see a little bit of a hockey stick there in 2011. Does anybody know what that hockey stick is? Anyone? Correct. Prize to the gentleman over there. That set the industry on fire. That's a very interesting, um, interesting picture looking at what actually happened at that point. So. Let's take a closer look at the bird. Um, <clears throat> some of the premise going into making Angry Birds is, is, is quite in interesting. Um, Rovio had at the time one shot left for, for big success. We, we had to make it really, really good, uh, really polished from, from day one. Was no, this was a premium era. There was no minimum vi viable product approach at the time. Um, so it had to be really, really good from the get-go. Um, we also had a new platform, iPhone and Touch. Um, this, was, this was not without challenges, naturally. Uh, a new form factor, um, a new device, um, a new marketplace, a new everything that presented a lot of opportunity, but a lot of challenges at the same time. Um, we wanted to go for the biggest possible audience. Um, that resulted in a casual game. 
Uh, there was also a big online gaming trend at the time. Physics puzzlers were, were new, and they were, they were really, really popular online. And we wanted to make sure that we had uh, an IP that could uh, stand the test of time and could, had the premise, had, had the opportunity to be, become something big uh, if we happened to get there. Now I'm going to show um, a trailer made in 2010. Some of you might have seen this, but this was the first Angry Birds trailer at the time. Um, and this was, I think this was like a 10 to 20,000 euro budget. Massive budget for, for a trailer for Rovi. I think massive tr budget for a mobile games trailer at the time in general. Not a lot of games companies were spending heavily on trailers. But it, 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 shows, it shows quite nicely where we came from. I, I, personally, I love the Nokia Obi part, the, almost the m most of that video. Really, like, has a almost like a emotional attachment to it. So, the elements are all there. They just look quite different from to where we are at the moment. So, next up, a short video of what has happened. I think since, so you get a feeling of of um, of some of the major milestones and growing to where where Angry Birds eventually went. Dear friends, after too many years and too many victims, I believe we have reached an agreement that will put an end to the senseless conflict between you. <laughs> the man is up. Show us how a bloke throws an Angry Bird. Do you have a smartphone? Do you have games on your phone and stuff like that? Kind of? I do. In fact, I have one that I think we might have in common. What? Angry Birds. I just downloaded Angry Birds. Oh. Get ready to waste some time, my friend. Is your addiction to Angry Birds ruining your life? Cure your Angry Birds addiction in just three easy steps. Angry Bird Management! Let the games begin. Hey. So I'm obsessed with this game on my phone. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give you Angry Birds Live. bird right now and you're a pig i'm don pettit i'm a nasa astronaut launching red bird into space we have decided to honor tonight finland's greatest contribution to mankind talking of course about the video game angry birds people in finland are gonna go crazy for this we've built the world's largest live action angry birds game check it out right there it makes perfect sense uh some evil pigs have stolen some birds eggs what way would you would you try to get the eggs back by then launching yourself through a catapult at the at the castles that the pigs have constructed the pigs build of course they do. They're pigs. So we're gonna kidnap a bird. Take everything. 
Rovio has sent me a giant box of stuff. Oh my gosh, this is big. This next package, this is actually from Rovio. It's a giant pig. That's freaking awesome. Thank you for the birthday wishes, Rovio. You guys are awesome. So it became quite big. We've had over 3 billion downloads of, of Angry Birds games. Um, we have a, um, basically a Toons TV channel integrated across our games that has had to date over 5 billion views, over 2 billion views, YouTube views. We have one of the biggest brand channels uh, on YouTube of them all. Over 26 million Facebook followers and, and quite a big um, global brand awareness. Um, I, next, we're going to go into some of the reasons why why we believe we um, were there. But one of the big things that um, I think applies to this that is, and I'll, I'll get to more detail in a second, is that I think what we have in our hands is, a, is what you'd call a culture universal. Um, it's, it's something that resonates across the globe, regardless of, of uh, where you're from, uh, how you've been brought up, uh, religion, uh, geography. Uh, it resonates everywhere. So, why? So, Angry Birds has a level of simplicity um, in it. The initial game, you know how we build free-to-play games nowadays and the Fatui can, can last for, for, and sometimes even days, um, depending on how you, how you spread it out. Um, I'll show you the, this was the tutorial, or this was um, the intro. Um, of Angry Birds. You showed it in the game like this, uh, from scrolling from left to right. It was obvious something had gone wrong. Pigs had stolen the eggs. And then the tutorial was really as simple as it gets. That was it. That was the tutorial for, for the initial Angry Birds. So why did... The, how did that look? What did that translate into in terms of some tangible metrics? Um, some of us probably look back and, and think about Angry Birds as something that came out of, out of nowhere, became a huge phenomenon um, kind of overnight. Um, that's not really the case when you look at, I think Google Trends is a, is a good indicator of how, how things grow over time. Um, that's Angry Birds. And the interesting part here is that it was actually launched, Angry Birds was launched in December 2009. So it took time to build to where it eventually got. Uh, initially, um, Rovio was denied featuring. We were working with a publisher at the time. Angry Birds was denied featuring. Um, we made some conscious marketing efforts in a few small, smaller European territories. Um, games shot into number one position in those territories, and it didn't come down. It stayed in number one position. Uh, with, I think we had two of those cases in our, in our pocket. We went back to Apple and said, look at this. Um, and then they featured us. Uh, and that was in spring 2010. And then eventually it grew, and we made a lot of conscious marketing to actually keep it growing over time. Um, comparing apples to apples here, <laughs> I, I plotted Gangnam Style, just as an example of something that, that grew really big kind of overnight, and then fell away. Um, it's just interesting to look at those, at the difference of, of um, kind of peak behavior in, in online search. Um, if, you, if you do this comparison, it's actually interesting to compare different, different media phenomena. Flappy Bird is a really interesting one to plot over time as well. Um, we shot into number one paid. Um, Angry Birds holds the record for most days at the top of paid apps chart. I think almost a year um, at the number one position. What all of that hype translate in, translated into was also quite impressive uh, retention metrics. Um, this is measured through Flurry, but it's not a rolling retention uh, statistic. Um, but this is what it looked like. Uh, back in 2010. So a huge media phenomenon uh, translates, or so let's, let me put it this way, a, me a phenomenon translates into tangible KPIs as well. 
I think in this day and age, uh, any one of us would do almost anything uh, to reach that level of metrics in our free-to-play games. I know I would. Um, so let's look at now the culture universal bit, just a tad bit deeper. So here are a few things that kids across the world, pretty much regardless of where you're from, do. You, you build, you knock things over, you play. Um, and I've plotted a few quite famous games around those just to display how those culturally universal actions have translated into games. And lastly, Angry Birds. So it had an element, Angry Birds had an element, it was caught, of course, the perfect wave, but it had an element that was resonating this regardless of, of where people were, were, were playing the game. So how to capture lightning in a bottle. Some of the learnings. Number one, um, Maybe we could call it a minimum awesome product. I like that label, but it was, it was definitely not a, a soft launch. It was an amazing game from day one. And despite having some initial struggles, didn't give up. We chased Angry Birds because we be believed in it. We thought it was a winner. Uh, initially, we were told, no, this, is, this won't resonate with the audience, but we chased it, and we didn't give up. Culturally, culturally universal core mechanic. Um, a lot of those things that I showed you in the video, those were, were placed by Rovio, actively pursuing opportunities across media to make sure that the story was told over and over again in really clever ways. And as you'd always come to find in these, these things. It's, it's, we were also at the right place at the right time. There is always a little bit of an element of luck, but you need to cross off, off other things to, um, to make sure that you can, you can get to a very unique position. And that took, us, took birds to places where no birds had gone before. Um, next up is the next evolution of, of our Angry Birds franchise. We're working on a number of new franchises as well, um, but I'll show you the, um, the trailer for, for, for our feature-length movie coming out in May next year. We're quite proud of the, uh, of the movie. It's, it's, it's looking really, really good. It's really funny. Um, I'll show it to you now. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they love Hey, Red, how are you? Oh, I'm horrible. on managing our anger through movement. Eagle, heron, peacock, warrior, mountain, tree, rabbit, fish, locust, king pigeon, and of course, downward duck. Sometimes when I get upset, I uh, have been known to uh, blow up. Surprise! Uh. Uh, excuse me. Party foul. I'm a pig. What's a pig? Unbelievable. Not working. Not working. Oh, where are we going? Not working. <sighs> we practiced this a hundred times. Oh, man. Give it to me. Oh. We're going to come in again. Ha <laughs> ha!
So that's it. Thank you very much for, for listening through. Um, I didn't do a, much of a speech on my, my own business unit, but if you have great games for publishing, you can reach me there. Cheers. Hi. Uh, just wondering regarding the technology you used to create this game, please. So the question was, what technology did we use to create the game? the original one. It was our in-house um, game engine uh, at the time. Since then, we've, we've worked with a multitude of, of, of different game engines across both our external and our internal development. But this was um, our internal one called Fusion. Uh, you mentioned you had an extensive amount of marketing activities around the game itself. There was e longevity of a couple of years that you maintained the marketing tactic. Is there any way you can break down a couple of the marketing activities specifically that you did to help support this effort? Sure. Um, I think at the time we were consciously going after a lot of PR. Um, the effectiveness of at, at that time was probably a little bit different to what it is today. Um, we went after multitude of partnerships uh, over the time. We're a partner with uh, National Geographic, we're partnered with NASA. Um, we, we created those partnerships at a time when, when the game was growing and, and we were able to uh, accelerate that growth um, through, through working with um, entities that have a large audience. Um, on top of that, we did a lot of conscious channel marketing efforts towards, uh, towards the stores. Um, including, as you saw uh, at that time, uh, Nokia, Ovi, um, and, and some of the up-and-coming stores. So there was, I think, those are maybe some of the, some of the key actions. Performance marketing uh, at that time was, I want to say, quite rudimentary. Um, yeah, we did experiments at the time as well with that, but as, as we um, reached the number one position, it, it simply didn't uh, move away from there. So we didn't, we didn't need, need to really acquire users per se, but we were going after more of a brand play, a holistic brand play for Angry Birds at the time. Hi. Um, talking about your own business unit, uh, could you give us like a glimpse at uh, what you're looking at uh, in games for the Rovio stars? Because you have like a lot of like different things in that portfolio at the moment. Uh, is, is there like some angle direction that's like specifically interesting for you guys? Yeah, sure. Um, the question was, what, basically, what are we looking for in terms of our third-party publishing, Rovia Stars? So if I can take just a minute to explain how, how the business unit works. Uh, Rovia Stars is the same team manages both external productions as well as third-party productions. So whenever we make a game externally, like Angry Birds Epic, Transformers Go, um, Angry Birds Pop, uh, Angry Birds Fight, and there's, 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 a, few, there's a lot more that we're working on. Um, um, we, we, uh, we look for really credible developers that have, um, have, have a background in, in, in some level of, of, of success in a way or another. Um, that doesn't always have to, have to mean monetary success. Um, in terms of the third-party publishing program, uh, we're looking for really, really strong visuals. We are, we are quite a visual company. Um, we tend to go in quite late when it comes to the third-party publishing, so we've, we've partnered even with games that are already in soft launch. Uh, that has happened actually a few times. Um, credible monetization, credible uh, free-to-play mechanics, uh, really good visuals, um, and hopefully games that could uh, have a life outside of the smartphone so, or tablet, uh, games that could 
uh, end up in plushies, end up on TV. Um, I think that's, in a nutshell, what we're looking for in terms of our publishing program. Okay, just a real quick question about the, the Hatch services, how that can help as far as a, a new publisher, or I mean a new developer that wants to get into the program? Uh, sure. Uh, I think that's actually a question that we could chat a little bit more about because I could, I, could, I could go on and on. So Hatch, just, just so you know, it's our technology platform, our, our back end that we um, serve ads through. We have our own mediation layer. We, uh, we run all our analytics through it, all our monetization, offers, sales, etc. So that's what the question is about. And I, I, I think I'd better take that.